actually um, put a comment out on our Facebook uh, page saying, you know, where would you like to see the next Tupelo Honey Cafe? And the Tri-Cities just went absolutely crazy. I mean, the amount of responses, thousands of responses uh, in a 24-hour period. And we saw it as a great opportunity to really kind of reach out and, and set ourselves apart and, and kind of gather everyone up here in the region to start voting for Johnson City. And they had gotten people in the community from all walks of life, from kids to other businesses to city leaders to the president of East Tennessee State to all come and write a message to Tupelo Honey on this long piece of paper. They fell in love with the old uh, CCNO depot here in downtown Johnson City. You know, it's over 100 years old, historic, just iconic structure. And then it kind of went out of the railroad's hands and in the private hands, and it was a lamp shop for a long time. I think it was kind of a little restaurant that never really worked um, for a little while, and then it just sat empty. The economic team pulled together everybody uh, in Johnson City that uh, could address any of our concerns or issues. They made it clear to us that they were very committed um, to not only their downtown, um, but to see this train depot come back to life. Because the JCDA gave us that building, we were able to really recruit somebody like Tupelo. Um, and at the same time, Tupelo Honey really wanted to uh, work with us because we wanted to save the integrity of the building. Johnson City has been incredibly generous to us and made it really a appealing and attractive for us to move into the depot by um, committing to infrastructural developments around street improvements. Um, they provided us with additional parking um, facility for the restaurant, landscaping. Um, you've got the wonderful Tweetsie Trail running right in, in front of the restaurant. But the city has, fin has finished things like Founders Park, which is beautiful. And, um, you know, they've restructured some of the roads, they've put in new median. So there's really been a lot of thought put into the, the flow of downtown and how to make it as welcoming as it can be. The commitment to, I'll call it reurbanization, um, in Johnson City was very real and you could see it. I could sense through the things that they were doing with the fountains and the streets and the plants and the parks that that it really was a city that has thought deeply about its future and uh, was poised to really explode. So that project alone really kicked off a, a huge uh, movement to enhance the, you know, the aesthetics of downtown, the, the structure of downtown, whether it was looking at everything from you know, entertainment to recreational to this pedestrian movement in downtown. When we committed to that project, then Tupelo came back and said, if you're committed to, to that type of improvement, then they would be committed to redeveloping. Uh, we're already seeing it from the private business standpoint. You know, when you have projects like Northeast State, it's going to bring potential of 500 to 1,000 students downtown within the next two years. Um, we've got new residential in Paxton Place. You know, 26 units. You know, not far from Tupelo and luxury units of that. And so we're seeing a change occur. Uh, it's accelerated because of the public investment, because we now creating those spaces that are needed by uh, the residential developments that are occurring. So they all kind of blended together and, and that was our incentive. That was our creative way to, to get Tupelo to commit here, to uh, come in and be a major part of uh, restoration with, of the old depot and revitalization of downtown. I've been working for the city for 35 years. This is the most energy I've seen um, in the redevelopment of the core area. Uh, through Founders Park, through the Tweetsie Trail, the Farmer's Market, the new apartments, it's going to become a, a beacon, really, I think, in all the Tri-Cities, and it's going to, it's a, it's a capital magnet now. Businesses are going to want to go there, people are going to want to develop apartments and living and affordable living, housing, etc., so a lot of great things are going to happen. It's, I think it's, it's really on the cusp of, of being a very wonderful place to live, work, and play, and eat.